Hello again and welcome to another episode of Eat, Smoke, Drink. Today, quite an exciting review actually. Actually, they're all exciting, I lie. They're all exciting because when you have whiskey, it's always exciting. But today, it's my first Ben Nevis review on this channel. I've had a couple before. It's not overly common. Ben Nevis um, will go into some blends, but they also do bottle their own. But it is not the most common whiskey you will find in liquor stores. It's just not that common. This is a bottling by Single Malts of Scotland also known as SMOS bottling of Ben Nevis. It is a 22 year old sherry butt with a 540 bottle out turn 58.4%. But if you look at that color, dark as shit. Now, darkness is not usually something that um, determines the goodness, but it is always exciting to see a whiskey that is dark as shit. So it is dark as shit. So this uh, SMOS is made and produced by Elixir Distillers. They also do the elements of Isla Port Ascay Grange. This is their more limited edition range, I believe. Um, yeah, look, very exciting today. This is a 2019 release, so this is very recent and you can still find this. Um, you should be able to still find this at your reputable whiskey dealer. And um, a little background on Ben Nevis. Ben Nevis is a Highland distillery. It is a very old distillery and um, they actually still employ Dunnage Warehousing. So Dunnage Warehousing, if you've heard me talk about it before, which always, always excites me. Um, Dunnage Warehousing is where they have three high and it's in a very old fashioned rudimentary, relatively exposed um, kind of warehousing. So you get a lot of that dampness, you get a lot of that wood, that mossy, fusty flavors. You should anyway, so I'm not sure yet. This is my first time trying today. I haven't tried this before. Um, so you hopefully will get some of that um, that foostiness as well. Ben Nevis is known for their old style, old style whiskey. Um, they, that's just the way they do things and they use a brewer's yeast as well, not just your normal whiskey maker's yeast. So brewer's yeast in a nutshell, and I'm not gonna get into the biology of it as such. Brewer's yeast is a less efficient kind of yeast. So it doesn't suck dry the fermentation process rapidly. It's less efficient, it does it a little bit slower. So, you know, I don't really know the full difference between brewer's yeast and non-brewer's yeast, but um, brewer's yeast is definitely old fashioned and um, some articles out there say that the brewer's yeast does give you a different kind of flavor, um, a more complex flavor, a deeper depth, um, because it is less efficient. It takes a little bit longer to get the alcohol out of the um, basically per kilogram of barley. So, I mean, what I'm assuming that means is that you'll need a little bit more barley perhaps um, to, you know, to, to get that alcohol, perhaps. Um, ben Nevis is actually owned by Nika. Okay, so Ben Nevis is owned by Nika, a Japanese, um, a Japanese brand, a Japanese massive conglomerate. I believe Nika is owned by Asahi Breweries as well. So they're a massive, massive company, but they have retained the old fashionedness. And some of the articles I've read as well, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but some of the articles I've read as well about them and publications is that um, Nika actually utilizes a lot of Ben Nevis um, in some of their whiskies for the blends because there's no regulation um, when it comes to blends there's pretty much no regulation um, in terms of where the spirit comes from so it's you know it's pretty easy for them to derive it from different distilleries they own and Ben Nevis is one of those and they'll be quite interesting if that is the case because then it just shows you that not all Japanese whiskey is actually Japanese whiskey because there are no regulations as such to say that it has to be X kind of um, production. I'm gonna add some water and Let's get nosing. Oh, one more thing. Ben Nevis uses peat to dry their uh, malt. And, um, but in saying that, just because they do that doesn't mean it always carries over as a peated whiskey. I'm smelling the... I can't really get too much peat out of there, but let's see how we go. I'm quite excited. Oh, that, that is quite a substantially... Um, smelly whiskey in terms of the smell it's quite intense straight away now granted I've just opened the bottle but that is a very intensely intensely flavored whiskey I mean the sherry is apparent can't miss that but it doesn't have that sulfuricness of some sherry casks that I've had before so that's interesting I'm getting a bit of tannin in there I'm getting a metallic a metallic smell the smell that I'm getting metallic, I'd say it is uh, when you touch brass, actually now I remember, when you touch brass or 
copper and you've got that metallic smell I'm getting I'm getting that metallic smell a little minerally I'm getting um, some cacao some cacao mocha coffee I'm getting coffee cacao mocha I'm getting honey but not honey as just out of the jar honey I'm getting more like a roasted honey where it's condensed a little bit and caramelized I'm getting a caramelized honey Wow what a delicious smell so far I'm getting a little bit of earthiness leafiness what actually reminds me is when I open the humidor and you smell that 70% uh, humidity of your cigar stored in that humidor I'm getting some of that as well some unburnt tobacco it is a hell of a nose it is a hell of a nose it's got a slight um, acidity to the nose a very slight but I am just getting brown sugar demerara sugar you know like that really really rich brown sugar slight molasses maybe even golden syrup I'm getting toffee an oily smell I'd say buttery but not quite but a slight savoriness maybe a cross between a butter or olive oil maybe an olive oil butter and um, olive oil margarine a little meaty and this sounds really weird but a little like um like a medium rare cut of meat with a little bit of blood um, I'm getting a little bit of that irony metallic smell to it and that's a kind of brass brass brassy smell delicious smell very compelling now let's try to sample with water so far it's been a quite a compelling smell Ben Nevis is quite an unusually tasting and smelling whiskey I've only had a couple because it's not the most common and they're usually actually all the ones that have had it independently bottled as well and cast strength so they're quite a punchy beast so far that is a very complex very complex and for some it might be even slightly confusing whiskey to smell Let's try the one with water. Her sweetness comes through a little bit more. The brown sugar is more prominent. Look, I'm not getting any peat. I'm not getting any peat, but I'm getting a little bit. Oh, hello. Hello, birdie. Come here. Okay. Um, I'm not getting any peat, but I, I mean, I'm getting a hint of smoke in the background. I don't know if it's my imagination because I know that they've used peat to dry it, but I'm getting a little bit of smoke in the background. But I wouldn't characterize it as a peated whiskey. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can correct me on that, but I definitely don't think it is a peated whiskey. I wouldn't characterize it as that. There is a certain smokiness and sootiness to it, but I wouldn't say it's prominent. But the sweetness comes out a lot more. I'll get a bit of cinnamon and nutmeg. That's probably from the sherry influence. The organic matter does become more prominent, and I'm getting more of that dunnage and foosty note. With water, the nose does open up and really reveal much more. I'm quite excited because I love that when I smell that dunnage. I'm getting a bit of mossy dampness, wet wood. What a nose, what a nose. Let's get tasting. Oh, so intense, so intense. It's like a, it's like a cough syrup. It's really bizarre. It's, a bit of Benadryl in there, or Vicks Formula 44 or something. Mm. Oh wow. What a mouthful. Whoa. Whoa. It is not the highest ABV I've had, but it's quite high ABV. But man, that is a mouthful. It touches your tongue and the oils just break out through your mouth wow i am getting i'm getting a deep deep plum plum jam spice cinnamon liquid raisin i'm getting a uh, the minerality is coming through earthiness that leafiness is coming through i'm getting a savoriness like unburnt tobacco Mm. what a complex whiskey that is one of the more complex whiskies I've had in a while fantastic earthiness a bit of cola syrup cherry cola a bit of spice I'm getting toffee brown sugar I'm getting organic matter I'm definitely getting that dunnage now it's got a little bit of a you know at the back of the nose is getting a bit of that dunnage it's slightly herbal and I would probably say tarragon licorice 
a little bit of aniseed in there maybe even a hint of cloves a hint of black pepper wow this is a fantastic dram this dram is completely off the charts when it comes to flavor profile i'm extremely excited because then i have almost a full bottle left i'm getting that unburnt tobacco the cigar taste and smell but what what a whiskey the finish is long the finish is complex it is I wouldn't say it's the oiliest whiskey I've got, but it's pretty oily, it sticks around, it's kind of tarry, no not tarry, it's thick, like it's thick and viscous. Um, I'm not getting that peat though, so I don't think I will characterize it as peated whiskey. Mmm, what a treat, what a treat. Let's try it with water. Oh, mm. I don't even know what's better with water or without water, but I would say progress it and see. I'd say 50 50. Without water, there is no alcohol sting and burn, which some people go, Oh, you don't want that. Yes, sometimes you do. Alcohol can be the glue between flavors, alcohol can be the glue between sensation in your mouth. So, by having, by having that alcohol um, concentration, sometimes you actually do experience more flavors than not. That's my experience anyway. Some people will disagree because they've read too many books about how you should water it down like a, a cordial. I disagree. But with water, straight flavor. I'm getting that or organic foostiness, slightly fungal, not too heavy, earthiness, leaves, leaf litter, wet leaf litter. The tannin is not too overpowering, but it's definitely um, strong. Spicy. Mm. With water, I'm getting a little bit of orange marmalade and concentrated orange peel. That that candied orange peel. Absolutely stunning dram. Absolutely stunning dram. I mean, I, I I'm almost speechless. Not true. I'm never speechless, but I would be if I could get speechless. This is fantastic. But the irony. No, not irony, it's in like, huh, that's an irony. An irony, the, the metallic taste, the brassy, coppery taste is quite prevalent. I don't know why that is, but I do get that brassy smell. Like when you touch something brass and you get that brassy smell. Like an old, like old set of coins. Herbal is there, licorice, tarragon. The aniseed and spices and aromatics are slightly less with water, but absolutely delicious. Holy crap. I am impressed with this bottle. I am probably going to keep this bottle all to myself. Um, I would say just buy a hair with water, but I'd say that try it with both. Progress it because it's so good. Now, I wasn't planning on doing it, but it is such an outstanding whiskey that I will recommend a pairing for it. I'm going to pair this particular whiskey with a um, Arturo Fuente Shark, Añejo Shark. I've got one at home that I'm planning on reviewing and I'm gonna earmark it to pair it with this. Añejo Shark paired with this. Oily, robust, slightly sweet, but also slightly savory. will just match it absolutely perfectly, I think. Would I buy this again? Oh, well, if you can't figure that out by now, then, you know, I don't know what to do for you. Yes, I would. I would buy this again. I would definitely recommend you buying this. It's still available out there. Um, and also Ben Nevis is not the most um, common thing. So some people probably wonder what it is, but you don't have to wonder. Just get it out of faith. Trust me, this is a face you can trust. A face you can trust. Thank you. Until then, eat, smoke, drink. Oh, absolutely stunning.